Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Welcome, glad you're here on this channel. You know we love simple crypto passive income and we love blockchains with utility use cases and that's all business problems. If you like that type of content, subscribe here or follow me right down over here at DeFi Divi on Twitter. As always, nothing here is an investment advice. I'm not an investment advisor. Always do your own research outside this channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about this big staking rewards cut uh, that just hap that is happening. It's coming up in like a week or so. So right now, I've, we've been currently getting 6.5% APY for um, proxy staking our HBAR to nodes. I've been staking on an LG node for probably a good, I don't know, six, seven, eight months now, enjoying 6.5% APY on a nice size bag of HBAR. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the implications of this cut both in the short term and in the long term. And I'll talk about what some of the challenges that I could see possibly coming up in the long term, pose them as questions, get your thoughts on them as well, as well as some of the uh, short term implications. Now, um, well, let's get right into it. First, we'll get into the tweet here. And I quote, as part of its periodic review, CoinCom has voted to adopt the following changes to the Hedera Staking Rewards Program, which align with the current industry average adjusted reward weights, rates 1.4% across the top 20 proof of stake networks. And if you don't know, CoinCom is the um, <clears throat> Treasury Management and Coin Economics Committee of the Governing Council of Hedera. So... They, they voted to do it. That's their vote. And why would they do that? Oh, by the way, look at it. It's a very nice green day today. A uh, little sidetrack there. Bitcoin up at going to probably hit 30. XRP pumping. Good. And yeah, I did see uh, HBAR crossing over the 60 cent mark, which was nice to see as well. Up 17% in the last seven days. Very cool. So um, these, and I quote, these adjustments are expected to further the sustainability of the staking program as a network, as network utilization continues to grow, maximum staking reward adjusted to 2.5%, adjustment of reward emission cap, and limitation of controls to algorithmically govern the reward rate. That's very cool right there. We'll talk about that. That might answer some of the questions I have about the future down the road, because in the short term, I'll say right at the outset, I think these changes are just fantastic. Doesn't bother me one bit, but I, I do have some uh, concerns over the long term, and this might actually answer it right there. So let's get into that. Um, there's a blog post here about the cut. <clears throat> Basically, it's a longer version of what their tweet was. But I mean, to the question of why, I mean, that's pretty simple. I created a uh, very bad Google slide so let's look at my horrible Google slide, but it should actually kind of demonstrate what's happening. <clears throat> so in the early days, what happens is if you're not, you're not running a node right now because community nodes aren't live. So we are what's known as proxy stakers. We're staking to a node. We're helping give that node uh, vote power to be able to approve transactions. And, and then as a result, we get part of that rewards, which are significant. Right now, they've been 6.5%, I said. But the, part of the reason that <clears throat> that reward rate is so high is one, to entice us to come in. And two, these rewards from these early days are coming more from the release of more HBAR tokens into the into circulation, inflation, if you will. Now, overall, HBAR is a defla deflationary token. It's, it's, it's capped at 50 million. So I think that's fantastic. I think it's going to be great for value, uh, the price in the long term. But, <clears throat> and, and, and they're releasing this a little ahead of schedule, I believe. Like there are about, I think at this point, there are, if you look on... Coin Market Cap, which is my least favorite website that I just go to because of muscle memory. Yeah, there are already 32, 32 billion circulating. So I think there, there are a lot more circulating now than they were originally planning to have. And that must be because a um, number of reasons, but one of the primary ones is they're able to release these faster due to how secure the network is because a part of the slower release schedule they originally had, I believe was due to making sure that no one could get enough tokens to do an attack. So 
must be all good there because there's a lot more release than planned. So all of the tokens will probably be released in a relatively short period of time compared to the original plan. And we're, we're getting close now. Like it looks like close to what, two thirds of them are already out. So this inflation is going to slow down, which means these rewards that we get are going to have to come primarily from the, the um, network fees. And so bumping that down from 6.5% APY to 2.5% APY is actually a fantastic move, it makes it much easier for the network fees to pay these to pay these stakers. So this is how this kind of, this is my very bad slide kind of demonstrates in the early days, we're primarily getting our rewards from inflation and we're getting some rewards from these, these um, <clears throat> network fees coming in as well, like for, for businesses, building out Hedera, paying fees into the network, and then those come to us as well. Some of our rewards are from that, but the majority at this point have probably been mostly from inflation. But as all the tokens get into circulation and there will be no more inflation, which is happening really fast, then and the um, transaction volume on this thing, it goes, it's going crazy. Over 16 billion, who knows, probably close to 17 billion now. Thing is doing a couple billion transactions per month. So what's happening here is these businesses, they're just building on Hedera like crazy, using it for really cool business problems. And they are happy to pay the fees into the Hedera um, network to use this service. Why? Because these businesses are adding value to these consumers and these consumers are willing to pay for that value. So businesses pay for fees to use the Hedera network because they're making more money from the consumers that their businesses are adding value to. So this is a nice, healthy dynamic and 2.5% coming in in the future primarily from business fees and fees going into the network, that sounds very healthy, very sustainable, very good for price. I'm super excited about it. So in the intermediate term, I think this is fantastic news. I think that HBAR holders, there's going to be a lot of multimillionaires coming up from this thing. It's totally my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm happy to have stacked this thing. So I started buying at 45 cents and I bought the entire bear market. So now my dollar cost average is, is just uh, just under eight cents, like 7.7 .7 cents. So this just needs to go up another penny or so, penny and a half, and I'm at break even. And then from there, it's just all fun. Uh, I'm excited. Now, stuff to think about. Let's save two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years something like that, you know, this thing goes up to $5. It could happen fast. It could happen slowly. I don't know, but I believe the price, I believe that's a reasonable price target for this thing within 10 years. $5. Now, let's say you've been acquiring for a while. Let's say you have a couple hundred thousand of these things at $5. You're, you're a millionaire, right? You have, or you have a million dollars basically. Um, now this is where I have concerns long-term because you know, on this channel, we love simple crypto passive income, but now your bags due to this token being awesome have grown exponentially. You have a million dollars. Now, when, when you're getting an APY of 6.5%, it becomes harder to sell. You're like, well, I could just keep these staked and earn what, uh, $65,000 a year just by pressing a button. Um, that sounds pretty easy and it's a good case for like, wow, this is going to be hard to sell because these are going to keep going up in value, but probably a lot slower at that point. There'll be a lot more money in the space. So we're not going to have these epic stellar spikes. It'll be closer to like how the stock market probably runs, in my opinion. So that sounds fantastic. But if you have a million dollars and you're like earning 2.5% APY, now you're like, okay, I have a million bucks in H bar. And it's, it's getting me 2.5% APY. I mean, I could move this into a real estate investment trust, real, a REIT that pays 8% APY and they, you know, provide housing for senior citizens, which is going to be booming for a long time. And that pays 8% and the business has been around since 1993. So now you have crypto staking competing with traditional finance, 
things like REITs, where you can earn a lot higher yield in that space. So the concerns are when your token does blow up, you want, to, you want to have that money working for you, making more passive income. You don't want to spend it, keep it in a bank, or you don't want to buy. I, personally, I would never buy coffee or toys or cars with any of my cryptocurrencies unless they're stable coins because those, they're stable coins. They, they're, they're fiat. I like to spend fiat on toys and consumable goods, and I like to um, not spend my investments on consumable goods unless I cash them out when I hit my targets. So it makes sense that I would consider putting that million dollars of that sitting in HBAR to work in something that's going to earn a higher yield. But what does that do to the network? Well, that takes tokens that are staked, that takes HBAR away from the network, network, network and you cashing out and moving that to something else. Now, does that actually make the network less secure? This is one of the challenges with proof of stake. I'd love to get your opinion on it. I don't know. I have to admit, I haven't dug deeply enough into Hedera's proof of stake uh, algorithms to know if they have a solution in place for that, where basically once you your your tokens become so valuable and you're not earning that much yield, will you sell and move it to a place where they're earning much better yield so you can just live off those, those, those dividends? Or will you just keep it there and earn that 2.5% APY? It's something to consider. It is a concern I have long-term, and I'll have to dig into that more. So I'm just putting that out there for you to think about, too, in the long-term, when your bags, when this thing's like $5 a token, and you've, if you've stacked this whole time, you're buying all these at this really low point, this, this gift, this bear market gift, you have the opportunity to do really well in like the next decade, but will you be making the network less secure down the road when you're selling and putting that to work somewhere else where you're getting a better return? Something to think about. Love to hear your opinion on it. Now, in this tweet, they did say the implementation of additional controls to algorithmically govern the, re govern the reward rate. Now, when we're talking about uh, you know, that far down the road, whether it's two, three, or two, th two years, three years, four years, five years, 10 years, there might be so much transaction volume happening on this thing that the fees can easily cover a, a six bat, you know, much higher than 2.5% yield. So this thing could, in theory, go back up the yield you actually get for staking as well. In which case people would be like, people would think, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm just going to keep my H bar right here. I don't know why I'd sell it. It's just throwing me this crypto passive income that I can live off of. So all stuff to think about. And again, of course, this is only in the context of simple crypto passive income through staking. Obviously, there's DeFi, places like SaucerSwap, all kinds of places you can put your crypto to work. If you want to take a little more risk, you can definitely earn a little more, definitely earn a lot more yield in places like that. But it's a little more active. You got to, you got to, uh, you know, learn a lot more, learn about impermanent loss and things like that. And learn about another protocol that's built on top of the network and just more research, more work, which is fine. You know, I, uh, this channel really love the simple crypto passive income, but DeFi is definitely another option and that's going to grow too as well. And there will be other places to put your H bar to work. I'm sure by the time all this happens in the future, but for now, I think this is fantastic news. I am not selling one single H bar at this time. I'm holding it for this bull run and then we'll see what happens during this bull run. Maybe I'll hold it for two bull runs because I might sell some other stuff and be happy with what I've exited with and is keep this one and some of my other keepers that are doing really well for simple crypto passive income. So that's it. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, everyone, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope this video finds you well and I'll see you soon.